Amen. If you will, turn with me to Matthew, the 26th chapter today. If you have your Bible, if not, it's in your worship guide. We're going to talk today about lessons from Peter. I, I know we're here to talk about Jesus dying and being buried and raised from, from the dead. And, and, and guess what? We're going to talk about all that, but we're going to learn some lessons from Peter. Somebody say Peter. Peter, Peter was a disciple of Jesus that... I don't know, I'm amazed at how Jesus went about picking his disciples. He went about, he didn't just get, he didn't go to synagogue and, and, and pick the, the qualified, the, the, the most prestigious, elegant, knowledgeable people. He went about and he picked common, everyday people. Peter was a fisherman, a commercial fisherman. You know as a commercial fisherman he was rough around the edges. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's just own it and say, he's talking to me. <laughs> Amen. He was rough around the edges. Peter was something else now. I mean, Peter was, I think me and him's first cousin. I get to heaven, I'm going to have to do a DNA test. because I believe me and him's got a lot in common. I don't know about you. I'll, I'll be honest about myself. Uh, I mean, he was. But watch, he walked with Jesus, and, and as he walked with Jesus, Jesus asked a question to his disciples. He said, who do men say that I am? And they're all going, I don't know, but who do men say that I am? Peter, being Peter, Peter says, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus turned to him and says, you know what, Peter? You didn't get that from man. That came from heaven. Common fisherman, he got word from heaven. Hmm, who'd ever thought? He got a word from, to the point where Jesus says, you know what, Peter? Your name is the rock. And on this, I'm going to build my church. I don't know about you, but I think if I was walking with Jesus and he turned and he acknowledged me that way, I would be on cloud nine. Come on, y'all. I would be on cloud nine. Amen. Peter, out of all 12 disciples in the boat, Jesus come walk across the water. Come on, fear sometimes rises up, right? But we've been broken that chain of fear. Walking across the water. And he bid them to come out. And Peter, out of all of them, was the only one who says, Hey, if you'll call me, I'll come. How many here today would say, If he'll call me, I'll come? Ooh, come I, I know. Let me ask that one more time. How many in here would say that if he called me, I'll come? <laughs> Peter stepped out the boat and he started walking. I believe with everything in me that he's going to walk these aisles today and he's going to have some of you to bid to step out of that boat today. Amen? But then you got to look at Peter on the other aspect. You got to look at Peter on the other aspect. You know, when they come to arrest Jesus, Jesus says, hold up, bro, I got you. I got you back. He pulls his sword and he cuts the man's ear off. That's the part of my kinfolk I think he is. He, he cut the man's ear off. In other words, Peter was really no one special. Amen? He was no one special. What, what I have found that God doesn't, he doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. I said he qualifies the call. I know. He, he took a meth addict and made a preacher out of him. I, I, I know firsthand. And the church said, well, Jesus penned these words in Matthew 26 and starting in verse 32. He says, but after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared he had to step in, open his mouth, Peter declared, even if anyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus, being deity, already knew. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night, 
Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even knew me. I, I'm going to speak for most everybody in this place. I, I think everybody in this place would say, at some time or another, you've been betrayed. You've been betrayed by somebody. Amen? Everyone has been betrayed by someone that says, I love you. And everyone has experienced hurt and disappointment. Amen? Let me tell you what happens to us when we experience hurt and betrayal. It's a cutting of our heart. How many of you know that when you cut something and it heals up, it heals up with a scar? Doctors will tell you if they've cut you in the same place over and over again, they can't do surgery there no more because it's scarred over. Amen? So sometimes, you know, I mean, it starts way back, you know, like when you was in, uh, when you was about 12 years old and you was, now some of my young people will not understand this, but I'll get back to you in a minute. Amen? You know, when you used to send them little notes out, will you be my boyfriend or you be my girlfriend? Check yes or no. And then they check it yes. And then you see them in the hallway with all their little friends and they deny you. They don't know you. Come on, got let down. I mean, if some of us in here may have had a situation in life that life threw you a, a, a curveball to where, you know, maybe your parents weren't what they should have been as parents. Hurt, disappointment comes in. Maybe you lost a loved one way too early, and it scarred your heart. Amen? Maybe you had a marriage of 30 years and they told you every day they loved you to find out they were having an affair. Another layer of callus over that heart. Maybe, maybe there was time you didn't make the, the high school basketball team. You got told you wasn't good enough. You got a layer over that heart. Maybe it's just, maybe life sometimes keeps cutting. It keeps cutting. Somebody saying keep cutting. Peter denied Christ. But he still died for him. Maybe some of us here today has denied him in some way. Ah, uh -uh, no, I have never denied Christ. Every time you sin against him, you've denied him. And the church said, Paul wrote this in Romans 5. He says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. You may have denied him, but he died for you. So that's our lesson from Peter, Peter, just a common man, went about walking with Jesus. I don't know about you, we would really have a hard time fathoming our mind that how could you walk with Jesus, the Messiah, the healer, the, the one that can raise the dead, and then turn around and deny him. I wish somebody turned that air conditioner up about a notch and a half. Thank y'all. Y'all are freezing me. I got all of these. Thank you. Sixty's not a number. <laughs> and the church said, Amen. Amen. Back to the message. We're going to talk about now lessons from the tomb. Hallelujah. Jesus. Matthew 27, verse 57. As the evening was approached, Joseph, a rich man from Arimathea, who had become a follower of Jesus, went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. 
And Pilate issued an order to release it to him. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a long sheet of clean linen cloth. He placed it in his own new tomb, which had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance and left. Both Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting across from the tomb and watching. The next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate. They told him, Sir, we remember what the deceiver once said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise from the dead. So we, re we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone he is, was raised from the dead. If this happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first. Pilate replied, take guards and secure it the best you can. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. See, what the devil's job is, y'all, is to seal the tomb of your heart. If he can seal the tomb of your heart, then God cannot penetrate it. Somebody say he's a liar. Hallelujah. What Jesus wants to do is to roll back the stone of your heart. Jesus wants to be able to penetrate your heart so that he can heal it. All those letdowns, all those disappointments in life. The enemy's job is to seal your heart up, not to receive the healing virtue of Christ. I, I'm here to tell you today, God will heal your heart. If you'll allow him to penetrate the stones of your heart, that's his job. The devil will set guard. Matter of fact, he tried today to disrupt what God wants to do here today. Today he has done everything he possibly can to keep some of y'all from even coming today. You're not here by accident. I believe that everybody is divinely called and appointed. See, sometimes we wonder why we can't get the joy of the Lord down in our heart. And it's because we have a heart condition. And that heart condition is called callous after callous after callous after callous of hurt and let down and disappointment. And we're wondering, I mean, the devil would love to tell you, they don't like you at that church no how. You don't even have the right clothes to wear. You don't look like them. You don't talk like them. You don't, you don't act like them. I can't be like that. If I serve God, then I got to live a boring life. Can I tell you something? There's no greater life that you can live than the freedom of Christ in your life. Well, if I, if I serve God, then I got to quit all this stuff. No, when you serve God, all your natural desires will go away and the joy of the Lord will rise up. You'll have peace that surpasses all understanding. The devil's job is to tell you, no, you won't. You're still going to have it rough. Look at some of them Christians. They look like they're mad at the world, and they, they broke, busted, and disgusted. I don't want to be like that. Let me tell you a little something, baby. You were broke, busted, and disgusted before you ever got here today. And let me tell you something. The healer is in the house to heal that today. If you'll let him roll that stone back. But it ain't going to happen. Because see, we are a Ephesians 3.20 church. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. According to the power that we allow to work in us. Amen. See, we're co-laborers with him. One thing about God, he's a gentleman. He's not going to come and just force you to do something. He's going to, pin, he's going to prick that heart. Some of your heart's been pricked by God, but you keep pushing away from it. Because you know what? If I do that, then, then boy, i got to change all this. All you got to do is listen. How many has ever been fishing and cleaned your fish before you caught them? No. I got to straighten up some stuff. I got to get rid of some stuff. I got I to do some stuff where I can give, come. No, come, let him do the cleaning. When he does the cleaning, can I tell you something? Then it'll be clean right. Amen. Amen. So you mean to tell me if I become a Christian, I don't ever have a bad day? I mean, everything's unicorns and rainbows. The devil is a lie. But can I tell you something? You don't have to do it by yourself. The, the good part about it is, is, guess what? All wisdom that you lack comes from above. He'll give you divine wisdom. 
He will give you peace that you've never had before. What he will do, I remember when I first got saved, I'm going to tell this story. I know it's Easter, but I'm going to tell this story. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. I want to always do this to myself. <laughs> I got saved, and, and, and I started going to this little church, and, and they wanted me to be a greeter. <laughs> you No, y'all laughing. Y'all that don't know me, y'all don't understand. I didn't like people. Because all I knew about people, they would hurt you, disappoint you, let you down, walk out of your life. They'll tell you they love you, and they really don't. They didn't mean nothing that they said. Their word was no good. And they wanted me to hand out bulletins. So I went and set them on the back seat and went on out the back door. Well, they run me down and gave them to me again. I said, I'll fix this. I'll stand in the front door, and I'll lit me a cigarette. (laughs) Surely they're not going to ask me another time. Some of y'all, 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 you the pastor. I wasn't always a preacher. Uh-huh. And I'm standing there and I'm, welcome to the church, welcome to the church. I knew they would throw me. Next week, they hand me the bulletins again. <laughs> Hardened heart, did, like I said, didn't trust people, didn't like people. And I sure didn't want you to put your hands on me. Did not, mm -mm. Yeah, some in here remember that. That's the truth. Then the following week, they gave them to me again. I'm going to the preacher this time. You don't understand. I don't like people. Don't. That's not where I need to be. Well, and meanwhile, God intervenes. How many of you know God has a plan? He has a plan. I mean, you just sometimes you don't know why he does what he does, why he puts you where he puts you, what's going on at this time. Some of y'all right now in the middle of that right now. I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. Can I tell you something? Just enjoy the journey because I'm going to tell you something. There's a, the trial and the test. There's a blessing on the other side of it. There's a healing to the other side of it. And I'll never forget this little old lady. She came into the church that day and and, and she walked up. I'd never seen her before. And, and I went to hand her a bulletin and she bear hugged me. I'm standing there, y'all, quivering. I mean, my, I'm like, would this lady please? I'd never seen her before. I don't know you. Why are you touching me? You in you invading my space. Come on. Again, I didn't trust what somebody said. Hmm. Next Sunday come around, I seen her getting out of the car. I went and set the bulletins down, and I went to the bathroom. And I went hid. This lady made me feel funny. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I mean, she was grandma. She was she was wasn't that she was out of line. She just, you know how older women love to usually they like to get you fake, you know. But she didn't, she grabbed me, bear hugged me. So anyway, so I, I go to the bathroom and, and I come out. I'm like, sure, missed that. <laughs> Praise God, she's sitting down up there. And I went to sit down and here she come. Bam! My <laughs> Lord, I run into this brick wall. This went on for a, a few weeks and, and one Sunday she didn't come to church. I sat there the whole service, I don't even know what to preach her. I wonder what happened to her. She is kind of old, you know. Something might be wrong with her. Couldn't wait for the service to be over, so I went to the preacher. I said, where's that hugging lady at? I didn't know her name. So I gave her my own name. I called her Sunshine. And most people know me. That's, gonna be, that's my words to you in the morning. Rise and shine, Sunshine. Why? Because we ought to rise and shine because the day is the day the Lord has made. And on purpose, we should choose to rejoice in it and be happy in it and be glad in it. That's a choice. I had to learn that the hard way. And he said, oh, she's all right. She just wasn't here today. Well, that next Sunday she come. I met her at the door of her car. <laughs> Not to get one hug, but I had to miss. I got missed last week's hug. I got to get it too. And, and, and in that, God used that to... to to start breaking some stones away from my heart. Her name is Miss Kathleen Tiller, for any that know her. 
awesome lady. I love that lady. Still love that lady with everything because God used her in such a powerful way. That's why we hug here. We're a hug in church here. Now, I did have a, um, I did have a um, uh, elder and his wife that was greeting one time, and somebody went to shake hands with him. They said, oh, no, we're a hugging church, except for the wife said, I'm sorry, we're a hooking church. <laughs> well, oh, Lord, it would be easy. But there's, God created us. God created us in his image and in his likeness to fellowship with one another. We all, I don't care the color of your skin. I don't care where you come from, how old you are, how pretty you are, how tall you are, how slender you are, how built you are, or anything else that you got going on. We all have one thing in common. Some people may not like blue. Some people love blue. I don't care what you like. We have one thing in common. Everybody desires to be loved. Why? Because God is love and love is God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. We all desire that. We do stupid things for love. Come on. Come on, men. Come on, men. Y'all step up here today. Amen. We do some stupid stuff for love. Because we all want to be loved. Because we're in the image and the likeness of God. But because of life and trials, hurts and disappointments and letdowns, and scar after scar over our hearts, we start, the enemy puts a guard over our, the tomb of our heart and keeps us pushing people away. And we say we can't trust no more. I can never love again. I've been hurt to the point with, that you know what? I trust nobody. Can I tell you something? There's one that you can trust. Yeah. And he's the healer. Yeah. That'll heal that wounded heart. I didn't say this. You ought to keep going back and get it again and again and again and, ag- and again and again and again. God never created nobody to be somebody's doormat. But I, I will say this, God created us all not just to desire love, but also to love. Yes, yes. So that we can express, we can't express that when our hearts are hardened and there's a stone rolled in front of it. We can't do that until he penetrates our heart. And I honestly believe that there's some here today that your heart's been shattered, been stepped on, hurt on, and then you go from one bad relationship to the next to the next, to the next, to the next, and understand why relationships don't work. Can I tell you something? They don't work because you got a heart that needs to be healed. Until that healing virtue flows in that heart, it will constantly be that way. And what happens is, and we wonder why we have a cycle of life that we have, and why people will tend to, to, to self-medicate, would rather be drugs, alcohol, or whatever. It's because their heart condition is not right. The Apostle Paul says these words. He says, there's one thing that I have learned. That's to leave my past behind me and press forward to the mark of Christ. I've learned to abound in much. I've learned to abound in none. I've learned to be right here where I'm at. I'm okay. No matter what the circumstances is, all hell be coming your way. Can I tell you something? You can walk through it with laughter and joy in your heart. Yes. If you'll let him heal that heart. Somebody say, let him roll the stone away. Well, I'm afraid if he rolls that stone away, the tomb will be empty. Can I tell you something? I hope it's empty. I hope it's totally empty so he can fill it, every part. And when he fills it, now the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I'm going to tell you something. I've had to deal with a lot of hurt and pain and and suffering and loss in life. But I can tell you today, I'm happier today than I've ever been in my life for one reason. Because he lives. Because he lives. And because I've given him my heart and said, God, mold it. I had to do a lot of forgiving. 
I had to let go of a whole lot of stuff in the past. And it didn't happen overnight. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to be healed overnight. But I can tell you how you start saying, God, I need you to roll the stone back yes. from my heart. Yes. I'm just a common man like Peter. You said on this, this rock, I will build my church. Even though I've denied him, even though I've hurt him, he still died for me. Amen. Some of y'all in here today, just because you've denied him, he still died for you. And in that right there is great peace. He doesn't keep record. When you say, Father, forgive me, he's, it's forgiven. It's cast as far as the east is from the west. To never be brought up again. See, the devil would like you to think that there's a, a video of, of all your wrongdoings and God's going to stand there and go through them. Uh, only ones he's going to go through is the ones you didn't ask for forgiveness of. All that you've ever done is a matter of saying, God, forgive me. And mean that with a repentant heart. But first he's got to penetrate that heart. And I've seen people come close to God. Boy, they'll serve God for a moment and then they just fizzle out. And it's because they never opened their tomb of their heart and said, fill it, Lord. I know I'm a jacked up mess. I have messed it up, and I'm going to mess it up again. I'm going to probably let you down before daylight tomorrow, Lord. But I know with your grace and your mercy, all I got to do is bow my knee and say, Father, forgive me. And, man, forgiveness is there. Yes. Somebody say, let him roll the tomb back from your heart. And as, as we allow him to do that, how many in this place would be honest today with yourself? Forget who's sitting by you. Matter of fact, this is what the Word of God says. Word, Word of God says, if you'll be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. How many in this place would be honest today and say you recognize hardness in your own heart? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Would each one of you stand this morning to your feet with every head bowed and every eye closed? ask that each person, no one stir and no one move. Opportune time, let's let God have an opportunity this morning to heal some hearts. And to break some chains in our life. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your words. We thank you that you are the healer. And only you can heal. Your word says that the devil come but to kill, steal, and destroy. But you have come to give us life and life more abundantly. And Father, we're here. We're abundant living people that believe in your abundance of peace and joy. We're not perfect by no means. We're just people here today saying, God, we need you. So with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today and you say, you know what, I need God to heal my heart, would you raise your hand this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I need you to penetrate my heart, Lord. Maybe you're here today and you don't know your destiny when you do leave here. Maybe you don't know heaven is your home. Maybe you don't have that security of that. If that's you, would you raise your hand this morning? Thank you, Lord. Without hesitating this morning, I want to ask for a privilege today to, to pray with each and every one of you that raised your hand this morning. Those that would say, you know what, I need my heart healed. Or I need to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. If that's you today, without hesitation, I rebuke that spirit of rebellion today. If you'll step out in that aisle, come, let me pray with you this morning. Come, come, as we break every chain. 
Yes, Lord. There is power in yes. the name of Jesus. Come on, church, raise your voices for him. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every morning. chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, as the Spirit of God is pulling there on you this morning. Is power Come. In the name of Jesus. There is power. and unforgiveness for something. Come today. Let's, let's, let's let God heal that today. Come. Step out and come down and let's let God heal that today. Maybe you've been holding something for the last 30 years on somebody. Come. Yes, Lord. let go of some hurts today. There's an army rising yes, up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To be free, you have to let go. To break every chain, break every chain. I don't know, I just need, I feel like I just need to talk to somebody for a minute to get this point across. In Africa, when they, when they trap monkeys, they will take a coconut, they hollow it out, tie a string to it, tie it to a tree, and put a shiny object in it. And curiosity always gets them. They reach in there and they get that shiny object. Then their hand's caught and they can't get out, can't get free. They'll come in and they'll beat them to death. Some of you, all you got to do is let go. And you can be free. Maybe sometimes we're holding on to some stuff. And wonder why we can't get free. So if that's you today, don't worry about what somebody thinks about you. Worry about what he thinks about you. If you want freedom today, it's in the house. Let go. Let go. And be free. Maybe somebody did something awful to you. Today is the day to let it go. Today is that day. So that that healing salve of his anointing and start rebuilding in that heart. Freedom, rise, 
is enough. Come. There is freedom. Christ yes, is enough. There is freedom. Christ is enough. Yes. To break every chain. Break every chain, break every, every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Okay, I want everybody in this place to pray with me this morning. I don't want just them up here praying. I want everybody, I don't want nobody praying alone today. Say these words with me today and mean them from your heart. He said, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Say these words with me. Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm ready to do it your way. Save me. Holy Spirit, fill my heart. Mold it and make it new. By faith, By faith, today, I let every chain be broken. Every disappointment, every hurt, I let it go. Now, Father, give me the strength to overcome what life has dealt. I know you're the healer, and I know that Jesus died. On the third day, he arose for my salvation. I know that he bore stripes upon his back for my healing. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it by faith today. In Jesus' name, I am healed, whole, lacking of nothing. Nothing broken, nothing missing. I receive by faith a renewed heart, a renewed mind, and a renewed spirit in Jesus' name. And if you receive that today, everybody in this place, give him praise.